Hi, uh, this is Josh VK2 MES uh, putting together a setup video for the Vero VR in 7500 using APRS on iOS. I'm putting this video together because there's a bit of confusion around how best to set this radio up. Um, some of the documentation isn't entirely clear um, and there's a little bit more context I think that can be added by doing a video instead of uh, like a written document or a wiki. So uh, I have my VR in 7500 on the bench here. Um, it has been factory reset and this is a fresh install of the HT app on your phone. Now one thing I will add, uh, I will just say here, if you're going to do a fresh uh, factory reset of your radio, you do need to remove the Bluetooth pairing from the iOS settings in your phone, or you will not be able to pair the radio to the HT app. Ask me how I know. So um, basically uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the radio in a pairing mode. So radio is in pairing mode. We will select the device. Uh, phone says it would like to pair. We'll go yes. And we have connected to the radio. So this is the radio as it stands, starts in its standard form. Now the very first thing to do is going to be to set up an APRS channel. Now for this, I'm gonna go into channel 16. I'm just gonna give this a name. And I'm going to set it up with the local APRS frequency of 145.175. I'm going to set it on high power and we're going to go 25 kilohertz for the bandwidth. I'm going to select the channel to mute and I'm going to turn off pre and de emphasis because it's a data channel. We don't need pre or de emphasis on it. <clears throat> it's really important to set the channel on mute. Otherwise, every time an APRS packet comes in, you will hear APRS data on the radio, which will get old very quick. Then save that channel. We now see we've got our APRS channel in channel 16. So we go back. Um, well, now we go, sorry. Now we'll go into the settings wheel in the top right-hand corner. We need to set some settings for the device. So I'm going to set a device name, my call sign's VK2 MES. So I'm going to set a name of VK2 MES. I'll leave pretty much everything where it is. Um, it's important that uh, for the latest version of the iOS app that the firmware is on 0 0.5.6. Uh, now this is, as I understand it, a beta version of the firmware. So you need to tap the is up to date five times. It will check for an update and it will tell you whether or not it's up to date. It actually looks like 0.5.6 might be generally available now, but you do need to make sure that it's on that latest version. All right, so um, now we'll go into the general settings and we need to set our APRS channel. Now this is the channel that the radio will monitor in the background for um, its APRS data. You do not need to set double channel or dual watch if you have this channel set. The radio will automatically monitor it in the background. The next thing we need to do is set up an APRS path. Um, in my country, the default path that we use is wide 1-1, wide 2-1, and that'll get you covered pretty much anywhere in the country. Everything else here can be left as it is. We'll go back to the settings. The next thing we need to do is set up our APRS settings. And to get to the APRS settings, um, from here, we tap on, or from the, the main screen, we tap on the little profile picture icon. Now here we can set up a nickname. I'm gonna set up my nickname as my call sign. And go save. Now, in this page, it's really important that these three first three options under ID signaling here that I've just turned on and off are off. The radio supports multiple digital modulation schemes and it also supports um, dropping positioning data on the tail of the transmissions. It supports location querying, etc., via its inbuilt system. If these three are on, APRS on this radio will not work. 
or it will not work properly and you'll get digital data bursts at the end of all your voice transmissions that will drive everybody else nuts. You need to turn those three off. The next thing you need to do is select use APRS format in the share location tab. Now, when you select that, if there's no APRS settings, it will take you straight to the APRS settings. So now we need to set a call sign. My call sign is VK2MES. My SSID for this radio, this is gonna be a mobile radio on my car, so this will be SSID 9. I'll put my passcode in. Um, I get my passcodes from um, a tool on magicbug.co.uk. Um, I'll include a link to the, the passcode generator that I use in the description. I like to leave the iGate service off because I don't want my radio transmitting anything back onto RF uh, from an iGate. I have local iGates in the area that do that for me. Um, the only exception to that is you might like to say, um, uh, you, you might like to turn it on so that you can receive messages from the internet, but definitely leave radio to internet, internet to radio off. Um, I'm going to change that receiving range down to 25 k's. Doesn't I don't think that actually matters. It don't, that only affects the um, you know, the internet to radio. Um, you can share your location over the internet if you want. I personally prefer to share my location over RF. Um, and if you turn share location over internet on and you turn beaconing on, which I'll show you in a second, you will end up with your location showing up from two sources. So it can cause some confusing things happening there. This is, however, where you set your APRS icon. So in icon here, you can select your icon. Uh, this is going in my ute, which for the uninitiated is an Australian version of a pickup truck. Uh, and they're a little bit smaller than a pickup truck, um, as the Americans would know them. Um, I like to send power voltage and send operating frequency. That only affects the internet beacons. It doesn't actually affect the, um, the RF beacons. So once all of that is set, we can go back and we go back to our user settings here and we see we've got APR, use APRS format is turned on now. Then in BBS routing, um, we need time to live and maximum forwarding times to be set to zero. If you enable max, maximum forwarding times, that will enable digipeating on the radio and digipeating is a little bit broken on the radio at the moment. So just be aware of that. Um, I'm sure that'll be fixed in a future update, but as of right now, it doesn't work. And now we go back and that's it. Um, uh, oh, once we set a beaconing time, sorry, um, in share location, sorry, radio sharing uh, in the user settings, which was accessed by, by tapping on the user icon in the top left hand corner. This is where we can set our radio sharing. Now, unfortunately, the radio doesn't support smart beaconing. So I have mine set to 60 seconds. Um, you might like to set a more frequent or a, a, a less frequent interval than that. Just be aware, the more frequent you set that, the more times your radio is transmitting, the less time other people have to transmit in the area. So if you're in a busy area, you might like to set that for a, a longer interval. Um, that radio sharing there controls the transmit. And that will go out on, if you go into the general settings, whatever channel you have set here in your APRS, APRS settings. So now that that's done, the radio will now be transmitting data over APRS. Now, if you want to send a message, and we can actually see if we zoom in here, we can see VK2MES9 and VK2MES5. Nine being me, five being um, the uh, iGate that I have set up here. Um, and we can see we've been receiving some... Um, uh, some data here from the messages down in the bottom right hand corner. You can see we've been receiving data over APRS. You can see we received data from VK2 HLT-8. We can see VK2 MES-5 and we can see they all came in over the RF APRS channel because we can see at 145.175. If we want to send a message to someone, and this is, this is a, a little bit out of scope of... Um, a little bit out of scope, my radio just transmitted then. Um, uh, my radio just transmitted a position report then, a positioning information. Um, uh, and then my digipeter digipeted it, which is why we see the packet there. My digipeter is a wide one digi, so it replaced the wide one one with VK2MES5. Uh, 
Um, if we want to send a message, we just type in the call sign of who we want to send a message to. Um, and this is this is just a service that will respond with a message. So we'll go AP spot usage soda. It'll transmit the message out. And we get a message response. And the radio makes a noise to tell us that we got a message response. And the radio will send an act back. Um, if you want to then reply to that station again, if you tap on the top right hand corner, you get the members list. We tap on AP spot, you'll see the message exchange with that station. So if you want to send a message to a new station, you do have to go into messages and then type in the call sign and then colon. Um, but if you've already heard the station before, you can tap on the members and then you can just send messages to it from that member. So that's the APRS setup. Hopefully that was informative and it helps uh, other people use the radio. So yeah, cheers, 7-3, uh, VK2MES.